So before we review the muscles uh, of the shoulder joint, I think we should review some of the osseous structures on this reformatted CT, 3D reconstruction, so that we can get uh, uh, some insight of where the muscle come from and uh, where, uh, where they're going. And so this is a posterior view of the shoulder. And uh, we have the scapula here with a scapular spine here. And uh, the muscles, of course, are the uh, sits muscle, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, spinatus, teres minor, and then the subscapularis. So the supraspinatus is going to be above the spine in the uh, supraspinous fossa. It's going to run above the spine, underneath the clavicle, underneath the acromion, and then insert uh, on the superior aspect, the superior facet of the greater tubercle. The teres minor uh, originates from the infraspinous fossa and occupies most of the uh, space here. It uh, is going to course underneath the spine and uh, above the joint here and then also insert on the uh, greater tubercle but on the middle facet. So the last muscle posteriorly is the teres minor muscle which uh, originates from the middle half of the lateral border of the scapula and uh, it's a smaller muscle uh, and the muscle belly blends in with the infraspinatus muscle but it's going to course and insert also again on the greater tubercle but more inferiorly so you can see that these muscles as they insert uh, uh, the infraspinatus and then the teres minor muscles and if they're pulling on the greater tubercle in this fashion, they're going to externally rotate the humerus. Whereas the supraspinatus muscle, uh, as it comes in, it inserts from above onto the greater tubercle. It's going to help initiate abduction uh, of the arm, pulling it outward. So let's rotate this around and uh, Play this video and uh, now we're going to be looking from uh, the medial aspect looking out uh, laterally and you're going to have the supraspinatus on top you're going to have the infraspinatus spinatus, and then the teres minor and then anteriorly you're going to have the subscapularis and when you look at this you know you're anteriorly because you have the coracoid process extending out here anteriorly uh, and so that's a helpful hint when uh, looking at the MRI. So let's play that here. And so you're going to have the subscapularis uh, occupying the subscapular fossa. And it's going to extend the muscle laterally. And then the tendon is going to insert on the uh, lesser tubercle. And of course, if you pull on this, uh, by the subscapularis is going to internally rotate the arm as opposed to infraspinatus anteriors minor externally rotating. So if we take the uh, 3D here and we rotate it and uh, look from above, I think it's important to uh, see the relationship of the supraspinous fossa here and where the uh, supraspinatus muscle lives and the tendon is going to have to travel uh, underneath the distal end of the clavicle and the acromion to get to the greater um, uh, tubercle of the humerus. And so there's going to be a tight space in between here. So here are three sequences uh, of the right shoulder. We have a axial T2 fat saturated sequence. We have a coronal on the right here, T2 fat saturated sequence, and then we have a T1 sequence in the center here uh, in the sagittal plane. And you can see that uh, uh, I have the scout lines, these lines on each side that show you uh, as I scroll on the sagittal in the middle, the orientation of uh, the images. And uh, they're obtained uh, perpendicular to the glenoid fossa uh, like this, both in the coronal and in the axial planes. So let's start looking at the sagittal view, uh, the T1 sequence here, and I think 
the sagittal view is probably the easiest to see the muscles uh, along their course. So first of all, here's the scapula, and we're lateral enough that we don't see the scapular spine itself, but the, here is some fat. So seeing the scapular spine, you know that uh, we're now posterior here to the right on the image and anteriorly to the left. And again, it's labeled here on the MRI, A for anterior. And so the muscles, supraspinatus, and then we're going to have infraspinatus. And then the teres minor is going to be hard to tell apart from the infraspinatus, uh, the muscle bellies, but we'll see the tendon. And then anteriorly to the scapula, we have the subscapularis. So the muscles themselves are going to be gray. You see all the different muscles have the same uh, gray scale. And uh, tendons are going to be black. So let's take a look at the supraspinatus. You can see there's part of the tendon here inside the muscle belly. And as you scroll laterally, the muscle is going to get smaller. Here it is passing underneath the, uh, the chromium and the, the uh, clavicle. Here's the muscle belly. And here's the tendon inserting on the greater tuberosity. All right. So then below the spine, you're going to have the infraspinatus. Here's the tendon. So let's follow that out. Tendon, tendon. Inserting on the greater tuberosity. Now, if we go backwards, we should find the teres minor separate from the infraspinatus and so let's see if we can find that and it's right here small tendon infraspinatus blending in the muscle belly blending in with the uh, uh, super uh, infraspinatus so teres minor moving laterally again inserting you see how they form a cuff around the humerus with their tendons kind of all blending together so if we go faster supra infra and then it's going to be teres minor and as they come in they form a black cuff of tendon around there so then anteriorly we have the subscapularis uh, with portions of the tendon here coming together forming a thicker tendon and then inserting right here on the lesser tuberosity so the last thing we're going to do is review the coronal MRI. And uh, the coronal can be difficult, especially in determining whether you're seeing the subscapularis and the infraspinatus or teres um, minor. Uh, so one thing you can do is, uh, of course, have a sagittal to review as well. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you're just looking at the coronal, one helpful tip is to uh, try to identify the osseous structures. So if you have a projection of bone sticking out like this, this will be the coracoid process, and therefore you're located way anterior in the shoulder, as we see here, uh, when we cross-reference the sagittal. So that would be the coracoid process. So anything close to this would then be anteriorly and would be subscapularis here. And you can see the tendon of the subscapularis uh, inserting here on the lesser tuberosity. Uh, when we are this far anteriorly, we should also see the tendon of the supraspinatus coming in. So here's the muscle belly of supraspinatus forming the tendon, coming over the top, inserting on the superior facet of the greater tuberosity. And so if you do see that tendon, you know, if you look here on the sagittal, that you're fairly forward or anterior in the scan. And you, if you're looking at the uh, supraspinatus, most of the time you should be seeing the subscapularis below that. And that's what we do here. We see the supraspinatus here, and then we see the subscapularis below. Now as we scroll posteriorly, we'll go uh, on the other side of the scapula, passing by here, and we'll now see the infraspinatus having more of a, I guess, inferior to superior uh, directed course compared to the supraspinatus which had a more uh, horizontal course here so then as we go back here's the infraspinatus and then just below that is the teres minor with its tendons coming in and you can see how hard it is to tell it apart from the uh, 
terrace uh, from the uh, infraspinatus. So infraspinatus, and then terrace minor. That's why I usually use the sagittal uh, view to uh, cross-reference uh, when reading the MRIs.